10 juicy stocks to watch next week. What is happening investors? It is your boy Jack. I am not a financial advisor. I got the clothing line to prove that fact. And today we're doing what we do every Saturday on the channel. Speaking about 10 stocks to watch next week, baby. Have some exciting ones on there that we haven't really spoken about on the channel before and some fan favourites. It's been an insane couple of weeks in the stock market in general, full of ups and downs all across the board. And you know, we're always on the lookout for the next juicy deal. A few of our favourite players have been killing it lately. Diamond Peak, Workhorse, Hylion in particular. We're always on the lookout for that next juicy company. So that's what we're going to try and find in today's video. So right before we get into the very first juicy company of today, can I please ask you to hit that juicy like button as it really helps me in the channel out. I would appreciate you massively. If you're new around here, what are you waiting for my friend? Hit that juicy red subscribe button and join the family of over 32,000 investors. And please drop me a comment down below. Just let me know what stocks you plan on watching next week. I'm always interested and I'll be in the comment section speaking with you guys. With that being said guys let's get straight into the first company of the day first up we have ticker symbol ccxx churchill capital 3 corp now these guys will be doing a reverse merger with the company that is multi-plan and for the record guys if this is your first time on this channel we go through things quickly because there is 10 companies i don't want the video to be 800 days long so this is a spac who is currently trading at only ten dollars 89 cents a share in the pre-market they're actually up to eleven dollars 20 cents a share but I mean, it's been slow. We've known about this for a while now and not a lot has really happened at all. And I finally started looking into this company and I have to say, it looks somewhat exciting. Now, the business model at a glance doesn't look very exciting, okay? If we go onto Multiplan's website, we see flexible, customizable strategies for reducing the cost of healthcare for medical and dental payers. So, I mean, it's not exactly the most exciting company in the world, but when we start looking at the investor presentation, things do get quite exciting. And if you do want to do some research on these companies, do just look up their investor presentation first thing i want to go through a leading technology enabled payment processor making healthcare affordable so multi-plan by numbers 106 billion dollars of charges processed 45 billion dollars of total value of claims with overcharges 19 billion dollars in annualized savings delivered to customers 1.2 million providers under contract 700 plus payer customers 60 million plus consumers on the platform 1.1 billion dollars 2021 estimated revenue 806 billion dollars 2021 adjusted adjusted EBITDA, 437 million 2021 estimated LCF, that is their midpoint used. So in 2006, this company had a $1 billion valuation. As of 2021, we're looking at an 11 plus billion dollar valuation. That is some absolutely immense growth in a matter of 14 years. And we can see that their revenue has about an 8% compound annual growth rate from 2007 up till 2021 estimated. And an adjusted EBITDA compound annual growth rate of 13% for the same time period. So I mean, it's a really simple business model to understand. They essentially save people money. So their business has five main revenue drivers number one the total claims number two the value per claim so the average dollar value of a claim process about eight hundred dollars the portion of claims with saving opportunities about 45 percent and the savings opportunity the average percentage of savings generated for customers on claims processed that contain an hour 42 percent and their share of the savings it just says here it varies by contract but multi-plan revenue is up to a billion dollars so i mean fantastic really easy to understand we can see growth over well more than a decade healthcare is a massive 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 industry. In 2019, US healthcare spending accounted for 17.7% of the USA's GDP. So it's an exciting one. I am still doing my due diligence. I more than likely won't be done until early next week, but I'll let you guys know what's going on. And if you want to be the first to know when I do buy this company or if I do buy this company, hit the first link in my description. Okay, yet another SPAC. So this ticker symbol is T-R-N-E. You can see on Friday, they actually went up 8.41% all the way up to 12.50 a share. And these guys, you know, have been kind of tricking up. You know, it's not exactly what we see from a lot of SPACs, specifically a lot of us will think of all the electric vehicle related SPACs, but I mean it's still been a good growth rate, it's had its ups and downs, but overall we're up. So this company will be reverse merged with a company called Desktop Metal. And Desktop Metal is a leader in mass production and currently additive manufacturing solutions, offering the fastest metal 3D printing technology in the market up to 100 times the speed of legacy technologies. So 3D printing, you know, it's a very fast growing market to be fair. It's relatively new technology. It's still not exactly mainstream. This industry is estimated to grow from $12 billion to $146 billion 
this decade. So I mean, there is absolutely massive growth potential here. The combined company is to have an estimated post-transaction equity value of up to two and a half billion dollars. Now guys, this is an industry, 3D printing, that honestly I don't know too much about. So I personally would not have the confidence to invest just yet, but I've seen a lot of people speaking about it lately, specifically in my Discord. So I am going to do due diligence again, hopefully early next week, just after I'm done looking into CCXX. I do think it's offering a very interesting opportunity. Woohoo, we have another company that isn't actually public yet. It isn't a SPAC though. It's a company we spoke about on the channel quite a little while ago. The company is Palantir. So they're currently being valued around $10.5 billion ahead of the direct listing. They have 1.64 billion shares outstanding as of the 1st of September. Based on the average private market transaction price in the last quarter of 6.45 a share, the company is being valued by investors at just over 10.5 billion, but that is far below Palantir's valuation of $20.4 billion in a 2015 funding round. So some of the numbers don't add up, it's a little bit weird, and a Palantir spokesperson declined to comment on the numbers. So take with that information what you will. So most investors see a company that's worth closer to $10 billion than $20 billion when we look at Palantir. If their direct listing values it around the average private market price, the stock will trade at about 10 times revenue. We'll have to see what happens with this one. It's going to be a little bit odd. The challenge for Palantir is to convince investors that it's more of a high growth tech company than a low margin consulting services firm. And I definitely agree with this one. Something to know about these guys, okay? We have a relatively small customer base. In the first half of 2020, Palantir's total revenue jumped 49% to $481.2 million with just over half its sales coming from government customers. They work with the government a lot. That is what everybody thinks of when they think about Palantir. They only have 125 customers right now that spend on average $5.6 million each in 2019. They identify its addressable market as the 6,000 companies with over $500 million in revenue. So guys, just another one that I want to put onto your radar in case you want to do some research before, you know, we potentially do IPO very soon. Now, they aren't actually going public till September 23rd, so you have plenty of time to do your research and make up your mind on what you think about these guys. And then we have one more special purpose acquisition company, okay? We actually have Flying Eagle Acquisition Corp, ticker symbol FEAC, currently trading at $12.10 a share. So again, a relatively underwhelming move from these guys in general. So it is a company called Skills who they are going to be doing the reverse merger with. They are a leading mobile games platform connecting players in fair, fun and meaningful competition. They're involved in esports and things as well. There's already a committed $159 million pipe. There is a projected 57% compound annual growth rate from 2020. And what's actually interesting here, okay, is that existing skills stockholders and Flying Eagle sponsor agreed to a 24 month lockup. I do personally think this is a really interesting one though. It's anticipated that in 2020, skills painted technology will power over 2 billion casual esport tournaments and facilitate $1.6 billion in paid entry fees for games hosted on a secure and proprietary platform. And remember that 57% compound annual growth rate. The gaming industry is larger than movies, music, and books with more than 2.7 billion gamers playing monthly. Mobile is also the fastest growing segment of the gaming market expected to increase from 68 billion last year to 150 billion in 2025. So look, in my opinion, they're a really interesting company, especially since I am a bit of a gamer. They're established, they have a large customer base as it is, and they're in a very fast growing market. We haven't really had much of a pop since this was announced. Definitely worth keeping an eye on. But that is it for the SPACs today. Four companies that we don't really speak about on this channel that I do think are well worth having a research into. Next up, we have my baby, my favorite company, my biggest position. You all already know this. I'm going to keep it really short and sweet. If you want my most recent thoughts on these guys, I'll have my newest video on them up in the corner. One month chart, okay, up 53.73%. You love to see it, people. You really love to see it. I'm always getting people telling me, I'll buy if they go to $21 or I'll buy if they go to $22. When we were $19, they said, I'll buy if we go to $17. I'll buy if we go to $18. When we were $17, it was, I'll buy if we go to $15. In the meantime, a lot of people have missed out and we've just gone on this 50% run. One thing I want to say about Workhorse is that I think if you look at this from a long-term perspective, okay, absolutely anything can happen in these next few weeks. We are, you know, anticipating the announcement of the USPS contract and seeing if we got a portion of it. But after that, Oh, the long-term growth is just absolutely immense, people. Keep a very close eye on these guys constantly for the next few weeks because any day now that news will be coming out. But if you watch this channel, you know that there is so much more to this company than just that contract. And again, you can go watch my previous videos if you want to. I won't spend any more time on these guys. But I feel like next week is going to be a juicy one. Here's what I really want to talk about. Hylian, okay? Why are we crashing? Oh my god, we're crashing. We're up 140% on the month, people, okay? I do not care if you say we dropped 14% in the last week or so. Who cares? They're up 140% on the monthly chart. This dip here is nothing, okay? 
I would say it's healthy price action. I don't think it is. I think it should have dipped more. And I am somebody who holds highly on, okay? They're one of my biggest positions now because they've gone up in value so much. I fully expect them to approach three figures. But I think it would have been healthier if we dropped considerably more than we have. Oh, but we just found out that the merger is going to be voted on. I don't care. Companies don't go up well over 170% in the span of a month and not ever come back down. They are not crashing say it with me everybody they are not crashing the biggest catalyst we could ask for is literally a matter of a few weeks away people the merger again i do not care about this 15 percent pullback in the grand scheme of things i do think we have a whole lot more upside potential in this company in the very short term and in the long term there is immense potential i just had to address these guys it was the same story, you know? The same people were asking me, are they a buy at 55? They said, no, I'll buy if they go to 50. Well, those same people are now upset because we're at 47. Why? I mean, this is a better buying opportunity than what you asked for. From the 12th of August to the 2nd of September, we rose 180%, okay? Since then, we've come down less than 15%. Hylion is not crashing, simply put. Okay, my beautiful, beautiful baby Diamond Peak Holands. What a run these guys have been on. It has been absolutely immense. One month chart, 95%. If you're a long-term watcher of the channel, I let you guys know about these guys before we went public. I bought them for the first time in the low 12s. Now we are up at pretty much $25. We're up again pre-market above 25 it's been beautiful. I recently made a video on these guys explaining why I believe they are the most undervalued electric vehicle stock right now. I think I made that video Wednesday, so even since then we're up nearly 25%, and that video still stands. I still think that they are incredibly undervalued in the short, medium, long, super long, incredibly long, mega long term. We've increased our pre-orders 50% in 5 weeks. We know that the merger is happening within the next few months. They went up 17% on Friday. I mean, oh my goodness, that was off the back of no new news either. Who are these guys? The Invest Chronicle. Time to buy beat down Diamond Peak Holland's corp stock? I mean, do you guys have eyes? Do you have the ability to click on the one month chart? Where is the beatdown? We're up 17% on Friday. We have very few red days. We are outperforming the market 10 times over, and they're saying, is it time to buy the beat down Diamond Peak? Oh, jeez. I'm going to keep bringing these guys up. I still stand by what I said. They are extremely, extremely undervalued. $2 billion worth of pre-orders before we even go public. I know all of them won't come to fruition. The rate that we are growing at, a lot of them will. Okay, after this, I have two big tech companies. Virgin Galactic, okay? 1656, a 5% dip on Friday. I bought these guys in the mid-17s last week, I think. It goes without saying. Fantastic value, I believe. Incredibly speculative company, okay? There is definitely high risk. It could be dead money for a considerable period of time. Two more test flights for FAA approval, okay? We know they're happening in October. That is going to be a catalyst. If they go out to plan, Richard Branson is going to space, okay? In the first quarter of next year. If Richard Branson goes to space, people, okay, I don't think there is a limit on what this company could potentially be worth. I think they will trade at immense PE ratios. They will also start making money. There is so many more avenues this company could go down in the future as well. It doesn't just have to be commercializing space flight. There is a lot more that they can do. And obviously, we have the hypersonic travel as well. There is a lot of avenues for this business. Two downsides I see. The first one being, you know, just not a lot could happen. Things could keep getting pushed back, and it doesn't really do much. Or maybe it goes down slowly but surely. I'm alright with dead money for a while if I plan on holding a company that I think genuinely has the potential to more than 10x within a span of a few years. And the other one is something goes wrong, you know what I mean? And ultimately it's not success. And then you lose money cry about it. Happens in the stock market sometimes, especially if you get involved in very speculative stocks like Virgin Galactic. It's not a 100% safe bet by any means. It's one where more than likely you're going to make a whole, whole, whole lot of money or you're going to lose a whole lot of money. Every week that passes though, we're getting closer to October. I believe there's going to start being more hype, more news being announced. Keep your eyes peeled on these guys and don't sleep on them. I want to speak about Google because this is ridiculous. The monthly chart, we've done nothing. We've moved half a percent. Now, before the broader sell-off, in fairness, they were up 14%. But, I mean, this is terrible. A company like Google, in a month, up half a percent. That simply is not good enough. But, guys, where it gets worse is we haven't done anything since the start of July. We have accomplished nothing. In two months, Google has done nothing. Now, that could be perceived as a very bad thing. For me, personally, 
it could be a buying opportunity. Now, let's all remember, on the six month chart, we're up 36.36%. But the other thing is, guys, if we go to the five year chart, we're up 129.34%. The NASDAQ as a whole is up 149%. It just hasn't performed very well. But I genuinely think that at some stage, it will and I really do believe that at some stage something is going to happen that's going to be a massive growth catalyst for this company and I know $1,500 a share might seem very expensive but I do still believe in these guys. I have a small position in these guys and I am heavily contemplating buying some more. I do think they're going to be one of the more boring big tech companies to be honest. I think in the short term the growth potential might not be as much but I also do think that they could potentially move a little bit less to the downside if you know the Nasdaq starts selling off a little bit broader. I think we'll see the likes of maybe Facebook and even Amazon selling off a little bit harder. Apple as well, most certainly. It's just one I wanted to put on the watch list for you guys, because not really anybody speaking about them right now. I still do definitely believe in them long term. It's just been really weird. Final company I want to speak about today, guys, is Amazon, okay? Six month chart. Beautiful. I mean, beautiful. We were up 110%. Then this little pullback happened. We're still up 85%. But from that top of $3,500, We've come down nearly 12%. We're coming back down towards the $3,000 mark. So it's another company where over the last two months, nothing's happened. We're actually down a little bit. Amazon's one I love. I mean, I love these guys. And I think their growth potential far outweighs Google's and the majority of the FANG stocks in general. I don't care if they're $3,100 a share. I wouldn't care if they're $10,000 a share. If you know about the market, that's not what dictates if a company can grow or not. I also think there is a very, 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 very real possibility Amazon does a stock split at some stage. And I think that would actually do a lot for Amazon more than we saw it do for even Apple or Tesla. But I mean, guys, this year has been amazing. And I mean, absolutely amazing for Amazon. They're in a fantastic position. And then we see a piece of news like this. Amazon is hiring 33,000 new employees with an average compensation package worth $150,000. I mean, they're in an amazing position. They haven't done anything over the last two months, but in the last five years, they're up close to 500%. As far as big tech goes right now, Amazon is up there in regards to what I want to buy. I do actually think that a lot of big tech Amazon, Facebook, Apple, even Google, as I just said, are in good positions. Microsoft right now looks like a good buy to me as well. But Amazon in particular, I just think is at a quite nice price. But guys, they're the 10 stocks that I think we should potentially keep an eye on next week. So guys, there we have it, 10. The juicy little companies, you know, that you can go and have a little look into while there is still some of the weekend and get yourself prepared for next week. If you have watched until the end of the video, I appreciate you so much. And as always, you, my friend, are a true legend. If you want to know exactly when I buy or sell any of these companies, click that first link in the description, people, and sign up to my Patreon to become a premium Discord user. Or if you want to join for free, we're up to nearly 1,000 members in the Discord, click the second link in my description. I do think, though, that the three SPACs we covered in particular at the start of this video are very very, very interesting. CCXX in particular. I will be doing the most research into them personally over the next few days. If you did enjoy today's video, could I please ask you just gently tap that juicy little like button. Please subscribe if you're new around here and drop me a comment down below. But anyway, guys, I hope you all enjoy the rest of your weekend. Have an absolutely fantastic day, people. I will see you for the next video. Peace.